and welcome back to this year's Digital Brussels Economic Forum live from the European Commission in Brussels. I'm Sasha Vakulina from Euronews and this year we are talking about building the new economy we want. If you're just joining us now, I'm afraid you've missed out on some great speakers, including Ursula von der Leyen, Chancellor Angela Merkel, Commissioner Paolo Gentiloni, a Nobel Prize winner Esther Duflo and Inca Group CEO Jasper Broden. But don't worry, because the next part of our program is just as exciting. Now, I'm honored to welcome the President of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak to you today, and I'm honored to uh, be coming after such a great line of previous speakers. Let me move right into the topic and quote for the purpose of this an economist who is well known to many of you, Rudy Dornbusch, who once is known to have said that in economics, things take longer to happen than you think they will, and then they happen faster than you thought they could. Well, that describes the situation we face today very well. The pandemic has accelerated pre-existing trends at a pace that we could never have imagined. There are possibilities for our economies in 2022, which seemed at least a decade away back in 2019. Companies that we're not even considering it, have digitized their activities 20 to 25 times faster than they had previously envisaged. One in every five work days are expected to move to home after the pandemic ends, teleworking, compared with what? With just one in every 20 days before. And the call for greener lifestyles has become amazing. Having accepted tough restrictions to fight the pandemic, now 70% of Europeans are in favor of stricter government measures to fight climate change. Europe has long wanted to shift towards a more sustainable, more productive economy, and we now have the very real opportunity to actually do so. If we leverage, if we capitalize on this moment, the pandemic could accelerate labor productivity growth by around one percentage point a year by 2024, more than double the rate achieved after the great financial crisis. So how can we do that? How can we capitalize on this opportunity? What we did during the pandemic was essentially try to preserve the economy, which was the necessary thing to do. Stop it from falling. Holding it. Let's consider compensation of employees. Compensation fell by 3.5% in 2020 compared with 2019. That's compensation. But if you look at household real disposable income, it's on a decline by 0.3%. Now, why was that? Well, mainly because government transfers compensated for the loss of income. They preserved. But as the pandemic passes, and we all hope so, we need to shift the focus from preserving the economy to transforming the economy. And this will require that we redirect spending by both public and private sectors towards the green and digital sectors of the future. To use specifically some numbers, we need to see investment of around 330 billion euros every year by 2030 to achieve Europe's climate and energy targets and around 125 billion every year 
to carry out the digital transformation. The next generation EU programme will help channel public investment towards transformative sectors. But it is a lot less clear as to whether the private financial sector can do the same. Fragmentation across national financial markets in Europe might actually constrain our ability to finance future investments in sufficient volume. And this is why I have argued and will continue to argue that we need to add another element to our post-pandemic recovery plan, which is to match next-generation EU with what I have coined a green capital market union, a green CMU, a truly European capital market that focuses on green investments and that transcends national borders and overcomes some of the traditional obstacles that we have seen in the way of capital market union. Now, why do I say that? Because I think that there are some good reasons to do so. Let me mention three of those reasons. The first one is that capital markets are particularly well suited for direct financing towards future-oriented sectors like green and digital. Now, of course, banks have an important role to play, but capital markets are better able to finance projects with a defined purpose, directly linking investors to the impact they intend to achieve. They can provide more innovative investment vehicles, and they are better at drawing retail investors towards supporting transformative activities. Green capital markets would not only help the climate transition, but also the digital transformation of our economy. Because green and digital investments are often two sides of the same coin. For instance, Digital technologies such as smart urban mobility, precision agriculture, sustainable supply chains are critical to the green transition and they bring together digital and green. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that Europe already today has a head start as the home of green capital markets and we should and we can build on this solid foundation. Europe is currently the location of choice for global green bond issuance, with around 60% of all green senior unsecured bonds issued in 2020 originating here in Europe. And the market is growing rapidly. The outstanding volume of green bonds issued in the EU has grown almost eightfolds since 2015. In addition, the euro has taken the lead as the global currency of green finance. Last year, around half of all green bonds issued globally were issued in euro. There is great scope for this role to grow once the green transition takes off worldwide and we see a generational transfer of wealth to millennials who are bound to be concerned about the future. My third reason, green CMU is an area where we have the potential to make rapid progress because it does not face the same challenges as conventional capital markets that have been well established for a long time. The European Commission is working towards completing a fully fledged CMU, and I hope it continues and it is successful. But as we have seen for a few years, and I'm sure we will see, it takes time. And it takes time in part because capital markets have developed nationally to begin with. That means we first have to open up and harmonize those markets in order to integrate them further. It's a difficult task. But the green bond market does not face those same barriers 
at least not yet. In fact, it has already achieved greater pan-European scale than the conventional bond market. Holdings of green bonds within the EU have, on average, half the home bias of conventional bonds. So we have a real opportunity to build a genuinely European capital market from the outset. That's why, in my view, specific initiatives under the Capital Market Union Action Plan should be fast-tracked, even if they are only applied to sustainable finance for now. And it might set standards for a larger capital market union than the green CMU. We need proper European supervision of green financial products with official EU seals, such as the forthcoming EU green bond standard. We need harmonized tax treatment of investments in sustainable finance products to prevent green investments fragmenting along national lines and arbitrage operating as a result. And we need further convergence in the efficiency of national insolvency frameworks, which may even entail carving out special procedures for green finance. Some of you might be skeptical, but it's worth giving it a try. Because if we succeed, it would not only accelerate the transformation of our economy, but it would also act as an engine for the Capital Market Union project in general, testing and putting in place some of the measures that are needed to advance wider capital market integration. This double dividend is, in my view, just too good an opportunity to pass. Institutional change in Europe often takes longer than we expect. But let us show that once we are committed, this change can happen faster than we ever thought was possible. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, President Lagarde.